ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ Uh, hello good morning everyone uh, this is Nick Karakel uh, I would just go, I would like to have a more detailed conversation around uh, President Trump's proclamation um, suspending entry of immigrants to America uh, I have had a very quick um, brief conversation yesterday during the New York Philippine uh, consulate kahapon but pag-usapan natin ng mas detalyado today okay so again as usual thank you for tuning in uh kung may mga tanong kayo uh just uh write them down on the comments section and we will try to respond or answer them as we move uh, along with the facebook live um so maraming maraming salamat again for tuning in so hi joseph teresa richie uh, salamat sa pagpapanood. Okay, so we'll start with our topic today. But then again, uh, just for a disclaimer, uh, this presentation is used for general purposes only uh, for the purpose of sharing immigration uh, information to you guys. But do not take this as a specific advice to you, even if I would respond to your queries during the presentation. Uh, if you would want to have a more detailed conversation about your case, uh, you could actually send us a message and we can talk about whether or not it needs further conversation. Uh, this is all about the uh, pre President Trump's executive order, again, um, as a response to protecting the U.S. labor market following uh, the COVID and hoping that we would be able to recover uh, after this. Uh, dahil maraming concern ang mga J1 teachers natin, I would actually want to discuss and during my last two slides about their concerns uh, para na rin isang uh, Facebook Live na lang yung gagawin ko. Okay? Uh, I really hope that you would uh, limit your questions about the topic uh, para lang mas makasave din tayo ng time. Okay, so section one of the proclamation uh, this talks about the susp uh, suspension and the limitation on entry. So, I summarize ko lang, this only prohibits entry into the United States of aliens as immigrants. Uh, so, suspended yon, though mayroong mga exceptions to the rule, and this is only valid for 60 days. So, hanggang June 22 lang siya. So, hindi ito pang habang buhay, though it may be extended depending on uh, the condition on how we recover with the COVID. And I hope maging normal na lahat and everyone is wishing that to happen. Uh, but the president has the discretion to extend uh, the proclamation.
Okay? Pag-usapan natin kung an sino or anong mga cases ba ang hindi apiktado ng proclamation na to. Okay, so mamaya may magtatanong pag-tourist visa ba or mga J-1 or an H-1B cover ba na suspension? No. Non-immigrant visas are not covered generally by this executive order. So yung suspension na yun, so if you have a valid visa and you are not an immigrant as we will discuss later, then you may still be able to come to the United States assuming na meron ng uh, available flights. Uh, adjustment of status ng green card holder, mga, mga green card applicants inside the U.S. So yung mga mag-adjust na dahil nandito na sila sa Amerika, they married to a U.S. citizen or they actually have an employment offer which qualifies them to apply for a green card while in the U.S., it's not also being suspended. So they are actually outside the coverage of the executive order. Number three, marami nagtatanong kahapon during the Facebook Live namin uh, kung pwede pa rin ba silang mag-file ng application. Yes, USCIS is still filing application, uh, accepting new applications. Uh, expect some delays because of the limited resources ng USCIS. So, but they are still uh, accepting applications. As a matter of fact, uh, they relax the requirement as far as yung normal rules nila. So, example, uh, dati tumatanggap lang sila ng applications if they were originally signed. But because of COVID and they understand the restriction in some locations na walang available resources in terms of shipment or printing, and then they are allowing now to accept reproduce original signatures. Uh, again, we we have a different Facebook Live con uh, talking about USCIS response to COVID. But what I'm trying to say is, mag-file pa rin kayo. So kung may plano kayo, mag-file ng spouse visa, fiancé visa, or trying to file a petition for uh, on the employment side, I would still recommend that you do that. Remember, the suspension is only for 60 days. A fiancé visa could still take about six months, seven months. Uh, spouse visa could take nine months. So we are hoping that by the time that your applications are already decided upon, then wala na itong COVID situation natin. So file your applications as you can. Uh, especially yung mga nasa Amerika na and they are also in danger of um, getting out of status because mag expire na yung visa, you have to file your applications on time. So that is, has, that is just to support that yes, USCIS is still accepting new applications. The National Visa Center. So, halimbawa na approve na kayo sa USCIS and you are now preparing for the next step, especially for the immigrant, yung mga spouse visa, employment base. Um, I would still recommend that you pay the immigrant visa and the affidavit of support fees. You have you are still going to submit your civil documents or financial documents, uh, your criminal records, uh, you, because this step could still take three to four months. So then again, the suspension will only last until June 22, and three months, four months is beyond that. So submit that uh, so it doesn't further delay your process, okay? So if you actually look into the whole situation, the whole immigration process na apiktado lang are yung sa embassy process, and pag-uusapan natin yan in more detailed application, uh, detailed discussion later, okay? But before I move on to the next uh, section of the presentation, uh, ito na yung mga persons who will not be able to enter the United States for the next 60 days or up to June 22nd, assuming that it will not be extended. So ito yung mga area where mga takot na yung mga tao. Okay? So let's just go over and answer some questions here. Uh, this is coming from Sir Joseph. Uh, attorney, ask ko lang, meron na ba na akong immigrant visa issued last February 25? Mapakasa, makakapasok po ba ako ng US? Hindi ako nakaalis dito. Well, ma'am, it depends kung sino yung um, F2B. Okay, so F2B because uh, do you fall into the minor children or spouses of green card holders? So it depends on... Sino yung petitioner mo? So, ma'am, uh, park ko muna yung question mo and we'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, so yung mga tanong dito is kung sino yung hindi makakapasok. Uh, but I will go over with the PNC visa questions. Attorney from Garcia, I just got approved for K-1 visa and it will expire before end of July. Double check ko lang po kung affected din. So again, ito yung introduction natin kanina. Uh, PNC visa technically is a non-immigrant visa. So as soon as it allows you to fly to the United States, I would encourage you to do that um, because you are not covered by the suspension. And 
even technically that a fancy visa is being processed at the embassy as a non-immigrant visa procedurally, uh, you could still argue your case. And eh, uh, your U.S. petitioner, your petitioner is a U.S. citizen, and you still fall into the exceptions of the suspension guidelines. Okay, so but you would be able to enter the United States. So again, uh, so scroll down lang ako dito ng mga uh, questions. Uh, Diani, uh, attorney, may visa bulletin, both bulletin A and B is both current. What does that mean? So, when you look into the visa bulletin, what is more important is the table A. No? So, ito yung mga cases where uh, the embassy is already accepting or scheduling applications. So, the table B is only for purposes of reminding applicants to start gathering civil docs or affidavit of support and they will be able to upload them into the system. But as far as Darating na ba yung interview date ko? You have to look into uh, Schedule A. Uh, so kung both uh, available na o current na yung Table A mo, uh, it only means that you may be able to schedule your interview or the National Visa Center should be ready to send you an interview date. The problem is, especially at the U.S. Embassy in Manila, they are planning to open by May 4th, but it may be extended. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I think they extended the... Officially, they said that they will be opening on May 4th, but I think the Philippines is planning to extend further the SEQ. So, again, let's just watch for the news at the embassy. But to answer the question, yes, you may be able to schedule your appointment, but it now really depends of the, at the U.S. Embassy kung mag-open sila or hindi. Uh, attorney, nakalagay din po sa ibang slide mo, hindi affected ang non-immigrant visa. Does it refer to those? Okay, so uh, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, I would, this presentation will focus more on the immigrant visa side. So ibig sabihin, if hindi kayo pasok doon sa conversation na yon, chances are uh, you are looking at the non-immigrant visa. Again, as a general statement, non-immigrant visas are not covered by the suspension. So technically, you should be able to come to the United States if you have a valid visa. Okay, so let's just moving on. Uh, for persons who will not be able to enter the United States up to June 22nd, even if you have uh, a valid visa later, uh, pag-usapan natin ng mas detalyado para maintindihan nyo. But in general, this is what the proclamation says. If you are outside the United States as of yesterday, you do not have an immigrant visa. So, ibig sabihin, waiting pa kayo ng interview nyo or nag-expire na yung visa nyo. That's what number two means. And number three, you do not have an official travel document other than the travel visa. This situation pertains to situations na Halimbawa, mayroon kang conditional green card. You are only given two years and it's still valid. Umalis ka ng US, nagbisita ka sa Philippines, naabutan ka ng COVID. Ngayon, mag expire ang COVID mo before June 22nd. Pero hindi ka nakaka-apply ng travel permit. Then that's a big problem for you because now you don't have anything to show that you have a valid visa or uh, permit, travel permit, advance parole or re-entry permit to come to the United States. So, pag yung sitwasyon mo pasok dito sa tatlo, unfortunately, you will not be able to come to the United States. Uh, yun yung general guidelines mo sa uh, executive order. Now, if down the road, you would be able to receive your green card kasi nung, puma, nung umalis ka, you only have the stamp of the immigrant. So, uh, explain ko lang to, especially doon sa mga employment-based, mga nurses natin, no? Uh, pumapasok sila using their immigrant visa stamp. And once nakapasok sila at nat-stamp na yun ng official port of entry, that stamp will be considered as anti temporary green card. So technically, if after a day na dumating sila sa US, plano nilang lumabas sa America, they would still be able to actually use it as the, 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 the visa immigrant stamp is considered as the green card. However, with the suspension now, um, what if na-expire yung visa na yon and they have not received the green card yet? The problema yon. But 
they could uh, they could find a way of sending out the green card or the travel permit to their relatives in the in the Philippines so they will be able to enter but then again if your case falls into any of the three then you will not be able to enter the United States so even with a valid visa okay so my visa ka ngayon dahil interview ka na issuehan ka ng visa will i be able to come to the United States so People who may not be able to enter the United States in the next 60 days or up to June 22nd. Spouses and minor children of green card holder petitioners. So, babalikan ko kayo mamaya. Pag kunwari ang petitioner mo, green card holder pa lang, then you will not be able to come to the United States even if you have a valid visa up to June 22nd. So, ang recommendation ko, once the suspension ends or expires and it is safe to travel to the United States, pumunta na kayo agad sa America because we don't know what will happen after June 22nd. Number two, non-healthcare professionals employment-based immigrants. So uh, later, if you're not a nurse, if you're not a phys physician, or if you're not anyone who is tasked to combat or help solve COVID, even with a valid visa, you will not be able to enter the United States. Uh, ito yung third group, if you have a valid visa but you are a beneficiary of an immigrant visa application because parent kayo ng U.S. citizen, kapatid kayo ng U.S. citizen, you still not be able to come to the United States up to June 22nd. So ito yung mga taong hindi makakapasok sa United States up to June 22nd. So sagutin muna natin itong mga tanong. Hi, Chris. Um, regarding accepting order, my brother and his two daughters still on the Philippines with a valid immigrant visa are the covered with the executive. So if your brother, I presume that the petitioner is either a parent or a sibling. So if that is the case, then they will not be able to come to the United States up to June 22nd. So if you have a ticket, uh, I would recommend rescheduling them after June 22nd. Richie, uh, sabi ni Richie, after 30 days, i-review daw yung non-immigrant, which is May 23. Okay, so again, ang presentation na to is based on what we know now and what is being listed in the executive order. Now, if there will be changes in the executive order or if it will be extended, I will let you know. I will have another Facebook Live by that point, but sa ngayon, uh, hindi covered ang um, fiancé visas. So, if you have if you have a valid visa now, for fiancé, I would recommend that you fly to the United States when it becomes safe to travel. Uh, J1. Shil Good morning. How about J1 visa holders? Will this affect? So J1 is not even... Uh, J1 visa is a not, not even a non-immigrant visa. It's a training program and it's not covered by the suspension. However, we have two slides at the end of my presentation, we're going to talk about the J-1 visa later. What are the issues? Niya. Okay, explain ko lang ang visa bulletin. Uh, visa bulletin or the VB, uh, hindi ko magets. So if you go into the Department of State's visa bulletin, ito yung way of the government in telling applicants that, hey, we are now start, we are we are now collecting your documents, the civil documents and the affidavit of support for your financial uh, support documents, right? So, hindi ka pa mag interview nun. Nagsasubmit ka pa lang ng documents. And after you submit it, it will still take about three to four months before you will have an interview. Yung Schedule A, kasi dalawang tables yun. The Schedule A are those cases na ready na for interview ng embassy. So, kung halimbawa, ang case mo na file on, uh, let's say, January 1, 2017, and you fall into the employment base, it means that you are now ready for interview. But kung na-file yung application mo ng 2018, so maghihintay ka pa ng one year kasi nga hindi pa, uh, hindi pa current yung visa bulletin. Uh, Glennis, mayroon akong, I'm a green card holder but still in Cagayan de Oro. So ma'am, uh, Pag-usapan natin in the next section kung ano yung sino yung pwedeng pumasok sa United States anytime. 
Uh, AC Adriano, yung status po ni Mami Manila Green Card Processing na sa US, uh, ma'am, hindi apiktado yung case niya. So as soon as um, matanggap ng government yung hinihingi sa kanya, she should be able to receive the green card. Lucy Lee, uh, schedule for interview for K-1 pero they are scheduled po twice, affected po ba? So then again, K-1 visa or non-immigrant visa, they are not uh, covered by the suspension. So as soon as you have your schedule, you should be able to uh, come to the United States. ROC or removal of condition and residence, this affects people who are married to a U.S. citizen for less than two years. Hindi po apiktado ang case nyo sa executive order. So you should be able to receive your green card as soon as it's being decided upon by the government. Uh, Justin Judah, CR1 case, buo ba affected? Now, it depends mga kung sino yung petitioner. Uh, so pag ang petitioner mo, U.S. citizen, hindi apiktado, but ang, pag ang petitioner, green card holder, then yes, it will be affected. Uh, in really, good morning po from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Ask ko po, how about the TN visa? TN visa is a non-immigrant visa. You are not covered by the suspension. Attorney, me and my kids have an approved immigrant visa F1. My mother is the petitioner. Nandito po kami sa Philippines because of COVID. If um, Okay, so ma'am, you will not be able to, uh, to enter the United States because ikaw... Yung case nyo is example of na um, hindi U.S. citizen spouse ang petitioner. So as soon as i-reschedule nyo yung, yung travel nyo after June 22nd. Hi, Ma'am Zen. Okay, so one last before I move on, uh, Michelle. How about using ESTA, British Passport and ESTA to travel to the United States? Okay, so ESTA is similar to a tourist visa. It's a non-immigrant visa. You will still be able to come to the United States when it's safe to travel. Uh, but you are only given up to 90 days to stay or three months to stay in the United States. Uh, if you will not be able to get out of the United States kasi hindi kayo pwede mag-extend and you, cannot, you are not allowed to change status, generally speaking, uh, there, is, there are remedies of uh, applying for a 30-day extension, but you have to get that approval before your 30, your 90-day expires, uh, but only for the reason of COVID, hindi for other reasons. Moving on na tayo. Persons who will be able to enter the United States anytime and assuming that they will be able to have an interview date at the embassy at mabigyan sila ng... Uh, visa, no? Because currently now, the challenge of you waiting for your interview is whether or not the embassies nearest you will open or kung kailan mag-open ang embassies. Okay? So, I will just to, to talk about generally speaking. If your case falls into any of the following, you will be able to enter the United States assuming you have a valid visa. Number one, any lawful permanent resident of the United States. So if you are if you are a green card holder and your card is still valid, you would still be able to come to the United States. If you are holding a two-year green card, at uh, valid pa yon, makakapasok pa rin kayo sa United States. If you are holding a two-year green card na nag-expire na, but you were able to uh, file on time your extension, which technically gave you 18 months additional time, you will still be able to come to the United States. Ang problema pag ang green card nyo nag-expire at wala kayong re-entry permit, advance parole, uh, then doon tayo magkakaproblema. No? But green card holders in general, you should be able to come back to the United States. Number two, entering the United States as a physician, nurse, or any healthcare professional who is being engaged to combat COVID, you are able to enter the United States. What if engineer ako, attorney, makakapasok ba ako sa Amerika pero mayroon akong immigrant visa na approved? Hindi. Yan unless you are actually being tasked to combat COVID. Okay? So yun yung number two natin. Number three, spouse of a U.S. citizen. So yung mga nagtatanong dyan na kung petitioner nyo uh, is your U.S. citizen spouse, you would still be able to come to the United States. However, if your petitioner is a green card holder, you will not be able to enter the United States even if you have a visa 
up to June 22nd. A minor child, less than 21 years old, or an, or an adoptee of a U.S. citizen, you would still be able to come to the United States without restriction when it's safe to travel. Number five, uh, ito yung wealthy immigrant investor, investors. Ito yung mga AB, AB5 na willing mag-invest ng 500,000 or $1 million in America and they already have an approved visa. They will be able to come to the United States as well. Uh, number six, if you are members of the U.S. Armed Forces or if you are being engaged to become interpreters for the Iraqi military or if you are needed for some police investigatory work, you will be able to come to the United States. And last group, if you're be, you are high, you are approved of an immigrant visa because you are considered of a national interest, so dito pumapasok yung mga investors natin, yung mga Nobel Prize winners, uh, ito yung mga elite group uh, ng mga immigrants, they will still be able to come to the United States. Okay, so before tayo mag-move on to the next topic, I will just answer questions kung may related na questions doon. Uh, Alko, my mom is just a green card holder, supposed to be flight niya last April. So again, mom, uh, green card holders are allowed to come to the United States. Jane, nakapag-medical na po kasi ako ng March. Uh, interview ko kaso nabutan ng lockdown. Cancelled ang embassy ko, ang, ang appointment ko. Okay, so if you are an immigrant visa applicant, and nag-medical na kayo, Nag naka-receive kayo ng interview from the National Visa Center, it was cancelled, it is your responsibility to set up a new interview date. So you have to reschedule them. Uh, and that includes the fiancé visa applicants na, na nakakuha na kayo ng interview date. Then because of COVID, it was cancelled. You have to reschedule your interview as soon as the embassy reopens. Uh, in some cases, if this is your third rescheduling, you may buy, you may be required to pay the, 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 the a new fee again. Kenneth, adjustment of status in country from T visa to green card. On process pa lang po, tapos na biometrics. Uh, again, if you are applying for green card in the United States, then you are not covered by the executive order. So... Uh, you are so don't worry about that, Kenneth. Uh, how about caregivers? Uh, this is a tricky question, though. So, talk to your lawyer if the caregiver mo ba, home care ka ba, personal caregiver, uh, if you are if you fall into the definition of combating COVID. No, so because marami ding mga home, uh, home care facilities that's being affected by COVID. But I would recommend that you talk to the lawyer who handled your case. Okay, pasensya na mga marami lang mga tanong dito. Uh, I just have to review them. Uh, from Winery, uh, how about po Philippine-born Canadian with pending EB3? Is TN possible since PD will be current? So, okay. So, this is very, in this is an interesting question though. TN visas are available for a uh, Canadian citizens who are planning to or hoping to work in the United States. So, ang problema ng TN visa, while it is very easy to obtain, you have to be very careful when you are applying for a green card holder because when you are holding a TN visa, what you are telling the government is that, hey, Canadian citizen ako, I'm just planning to work in the United States in a temporary base basis at wala akong planong mag-reside dyan. Now, if you already filed an immigrant visa, uh, visa because you have a pending EB3, once mag-apply ka ng TN visa, makikita ng officer yun na, ah, okay, so you actually applied for a green card, so you plan to stay here permanently. So, dapat na una yung TN visa mo, uh, later na yung EB3, but uh, I hope mo na lang na yung EB3 mo ma-approve because if you apply now with a pending EB3, chances are your TN visa will be denied. JJ Park, Green, my 10-year green card pa ako dito sa Pinas with my 6-year-old son, US citizen. 
mag one year ako nitong April 29. Mag one year? April, at gusto kong bumalik next month or May. Okay, ma'am. Uh, the rule is if you are a green card holder and you stay outside the United States for one year or more, automatically you will lose your green card status. So, ibig sabihin, hindi ka na green card holder doon by operation of law. So, if hindi ka makabalik by April 29 because of COVID, then your remedy is to apply for a returning resident. You can use COVID as a reason because these are un unusual circumstances beyond your control. Uh, if you need help on that, um, just let us know. But yes, you will lose your green card status. And even if your green card is still valid, so nakasulat sa card mo na it is still valid up to what year, uh, by operation of law, you lose that uh, uh, stat status as a resident. Uh, for Gelay, ito naman, magsi six months na siya, no? So, as a green card holder, you would be able to use your green card for less than one year. Uh, your green card will serve as the travel permit. Ang issue mo lang dun sa six months mo is if more than six months na siya nagstay outside the United States, then apektado yung eligibility niya for citizenship. Okay, so uh, nagbabasa lang ako dito ng... So, again, uh, kasi marami pa rin nag tatanong about K-1 visa. K-1 visa is not covered by the suspension. So as soon as you have your valid visa, then try to enter the United States as soon as you can. Okay? Uh, now, what if may extend na naman quarantine sa Philippines? Visa will expire June 2. The embassy extend the validity. Yeah, okay. So we talked about this yesterday. If your visa will expire and you are not able to, you will not be able to enter the United States because of COVID, your only remedy is to apply for the visa extension. And the embassy should be able to give you a new visa. But you have to argue your case now. I mean, uh, COVID is there, but you have to provide that argument to the embassy. Nikki. For nurses that will assign under COVID facility workplace po ba applicable yung exceptions? Sa... Generally, nurses are part of the exemption. Uh, you should be able to uh, enter the United States anytime assuming you have a valid visa. Generally speaking. Uh, so, ba kung nurse ka, kung hindi ka naman i-hire ka as a health educator, so I don't think uh, you would argue your case that you are combating COVID no? But if you're working in a nursing home or a hospital, I think it's arguable that, yeah, you are hired to combat COVID. Uh, Tony Gonzalez, I just joined the video. My wife is living in the Philippines while I live in America. We have been waiting for interview date or is still active. Yes, um, he, you, I presume that you are a U.S. citizen, sir. Uh, so if you file a spouse visa on behalf of your wife, you are not covered by the suspension. As soon as the embassy opens and you have an interview date and your visa will be issued, she should be able to fly to America anytime. Okay. Uh, I don't know where, Sir Lini, uh, I don't know where you where you are at on the stage now. In the apiktado and filing stage, there are delays in the decision because, again, limited resources on USCIS. If you are at the National Visa Center now, still provide, pay the fees, submit documents. Uh, we are still look, we are still seeing three to four months uh, advice from the NVC for interview dates. Pag complete na yung documents nyo, ang apiktado lang talaga pag nasa embassy na tayo, right? So if you are waiting for your interview day, uh, if you are waiting for your visa issuance, it might be delayed. If you are uh, waiting for Rescheduling of your interview dates, it might be delayed and so on and so forth. Okay. L1 visa is a non-immigrant visa, so it's not covered by the uh, suspension. F1 visa is a student visa and is a non-immigrant visa, hindi po siya covered ng suspension. At uh, Tessa Reyes, 10 years po ang validity ng aking green card. Dumating ako sa US ng September 14 at umuya po ng 2016 at hindi pa nakabalik. Ma'am, so you lose your status as a green card holder 
you might be eligible for returning resident visa. Uh, if you want to discuss that in detail, we can send us a message. Okay, Jen, uh, before we move on to the next slides, uh, last question to. Uh, good morning, Anthony. How about po filing I-130 of LPR? What will be the impact po? So again, filing is not affected. You still have to file your applications. Uh, if you are already at the NBC stage, submit your documentation there. And hoping na by the time na nasa embassy ka na, in, wala na tong COVID na to. Okay, what will happen now in the next 60 days after we've talked the basic about this executive order? Uh, if you are still waiting for the embassy interview dates, expect delays because again, they have limited resources in terms of uh, people going to office because uh, most government offices are closed and people might be working at home. Uh, if you already have received your interview pero close pa yung embassy, then you need to reschedule your appointments. Uh, after interview, so ibig sabihin na interview ka na pero naghihintay ka na lang ng visa issuance mo, expect delays in the visa issuance uh, because again, there are limited resources at the embassy. If you have a valid visa on hand but you are outside of the United States, you are not covered and uh, you are not covered by the executive order fly to the US as soon as you can and as soon as is it, it is safe to travel uh, because then again you don't know what will happen uh, after June, June 22nd if you are covered by the executive order fly to the United States after June 22 whenever you can and whenever it is safe to travel other than that uh, if your visa expired or will expire before June 22 then apply for visa extension. And that ends my conversation around the executive order of President Trump. Uh, my last two slides will be about J-1 visa holders, so hang on kayo dyan. Uh, but I will just answer questions related to the executive order. Uh, from Nina, we have immigrant visa na and cancelled la ang flights. Then we inquire sa and when they say that they wish to go to the U.S. kahit na... Okay, so ma'am, the executive order is very clear. If your petitioner is not a U.S. citizen, you will not be able to. So you might be able to fly and be on the plane. Ang problema mo pagdating mo sa port of entry, the officer there might refuse you uh, entry to the United States because nga of the suspension. Okay, from Roselle. U.S. citizens and lawful res for permanent residents and those holding valid visa on the effective date of the proclamation are not subject of the proclamation. Yes, ma'am. Tama po yan, ma'am. Uh, yung slide natin, if you have a valid visa uh, before or as of uh, April 23, uh, you will be able to come to the United States. However, if your petitioner is a green card holder, ma'am, very clear po ang executive order. Only spouses and minor children of U.S. citizens will be, be able to uh, enter the United States. So, again, just clarify that with uh, the embassy because uh, I don't know if the person responding to you was able to read the executive order because it was released yesterday. I don't know when you receive the response from the embassy. So, klaruhin mo lang, ma'am, no? para uh, hindi ka magka-problema na nandito ka na sa US and you will be refused at the port of entry. Okay, moving on to my last two slides. J-1 visa holders. Uh, there, This is the guidelines from the Department of State of how you gonna manage your situation here in the United States. If you are J-1 visa holders, it's not technically a work visa. It is a training visa that would allow foreigners to come to the United States and be able to share the, our cultures, right? They learn from the U.S. culture, we share your culture to the United States. If you are already inside the United States and you are on the fifth year, because maximum nyo na magtrabaho sa America is only five years, it cannot be extended. So if you are, if your visa will soon expire or it has expired, maybe let's say within the last 30 days, I would recommend that you argue your case for, I mean, there is a way of arguing why 
you've uh, hindi ka nakafile agad or hindi ka nakauwi agad therefore you lose your status for the last 30 days because of covid but if your case is still about to ex or about to expire or expiring accept the fact that it cannot be extended for 5 years your only remedy will be the uh, remedies will be the following number 1 file an adjustment of status or apply for a green card if you obtained a waiver ito yung mga nire-require ng government to go home to their home country and stay there for 2 years if you obtain a waiver based on a marriage to a US citizen file your green card now it doesn't matter if you lost your status because that will be cured by marrying to a US citizen number 2 file a change of status or a green card uh, and if you have a waiver if you are uh, if you obtain the waiver based on having a US citizen child the difference between getting a waiver by reason of marriage to a US citizen and getting a waiver by virtue of having a US citizen child the your US citizen spouse will be able to file a green card for you anytime the problem with having a waiver based on the having a child US citizen child is that your child needs to be 21 years old for them to be able for him or her to be able to file a petition for you. So mahaba-habang hintayan pa yan. So in that case, you should be able to change status to another non-immigrant visa, either another work visa or other, you go to student visa or, or tourist visa just to be able to maintain status. You do that. However, if hindi ka naka-obtain ng waiver in whatever means, uh, then your only option as of now is to change status to a tourist visa to be able to maintain status only. And as soon as, soon as the COVID scenario will be gone, I would recommend that you comply with your two-year home residency requirement para hindi masisira yung opportunity nyo to be able to come back to the United States again. My last slide. Inside the U.S. ka, you are not subject to the two-year home residency requirement but your visa has expired or about to expire. To expire. Ito yung mga kaibigan natin na nagtatrabaho sa, sa hotel and um, hotel industry, right? Hotel and restaurant industries natin. Number one, the, you have to coordinate closely with your J-1 visa sponsor. Uh, kung nag-expire na yung visa nyo, hindi kayo nakaalis because of COVID, uh, there are guidelines of finding ways to extend for a very limited period of time or to reinstate your visa because of COVID. But for those people na, uh, who doesn't want to, who don't want to go back to their home country as of this time, then change of status to another non-immigrant visa, whether from J1 to tourist visa or student visa is still an option for you. So in that case, I would recommend that you consult with an, uh, with an immigration attorney to explore your options. Okay, before I close my Facebook Live, and again, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I will just check if there are additional questions about the topics we've discussed. Uh, hi, can I still enter the United States using my tourist visa? I don't think, uh, if my flight, yes, because uh, again, you are not covered by the suspension. Emily, can I enter the U.S. using my tourist visa since I have a pending I-130 case? Yes, it should not be an issue for, for as long as you will be able to convince the officer that your stay in the United States is just temporary. Uh, it should be okay. Okay. Uh, from Jelly. Uh, yeah, so then again, uh, being a green card holder, you should be able to come to the United States anytime. The only relevance of staying outside of the United States for six months or more is that ma-apiktuhan yung eligibility nyo for citizenship. But your green card will serve as your travel permit less than one year. From now, the executive order will be reviewed within 30 days from non-immigrant visa. Sino po kaya ang affected? Again, ma'am, we don't know until we have the renewed executive order. So let's keep watching. Kung ano yung mga changes, okay? Okay, J1 to B2, then B2 to H1. Uh, Sir Gilbert, uh, no. Uh, again, the intention of the USCIS guidance is only to protect you being out of status. Now, if you are a J1 visa holder subject to the two-year home residency requirement, even if you 
were able to get a B2 visa, you are still required to submit a waiver once you would want to change it to H1. Uh, there is no work around with that situation. Uh, you have to get a waiver if you would want to get an H1B or go home to your home country, comply with the two years, and then ask your employer to file an H1 before you or an immigrant visa. So again, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, that ends my Facebook Live. If you have further questions, just write them down below the comment section. We will try to respond to them as soon as my time allows. And if you need to further discuss your case, you can send us a message. So maraming maraming salamat sa inyo and have a nice day. Bye-bye.